Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. G. Sai Sisha, postgraduate trainee, second year, working in Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhuvanesh. I'm going to present a case report of spinal schwannoma. Nausea tumors arise from stone cell precursors. These include neurofibromas, schwannomas, and malignant peripheral nausea tumors. These are World Health Organization grade 1 tumors. They usually present as altered lesions and typically present in fourth or fifth decade of life. This is as earlier presentation. And multiple lesions are usually associated with genetic syndromes such as neurofibromatosis 1, 2, and schwannomatosis. These are typically intradural and extramedullary, although they may have extradural component. And 70% of the cases are intradural, extramedullary, and 15% are completely extradural, and 10% are transformative. Intradural nausea tumors most commonly affect the lumbar sacral region, but few cases of cervical and thoracic tumors also have been reported. Intradural nausea tumors might be more common in lumbar sacral region because of longer intradural segment of the caudal spinal nerve root. 10% of the tumors arise as a nerve root leaves the tural sac and becomes surrounded by the tural root sleeve. These tumors therefore display both intradural and extradural component, hence called as Tumor. Coming to the case discussion, here is a 38 year old male presented, presented with symptoms of lower back pain radiating to the back of the hip and legs on, on both the sides associated with tingling sensation. The pain had been increasing in severity over the past few months and is not relieved on any med pain medications. The neurological examination is completely normal without any sensory or motor deficit. The routine blood investigation and urine, urinary investigations are within normal limits. So MRI image, imaging revealed focal in intradural extramedular lesion measuring 14 into 11 mm at the level of D11 and D12 vertebrae. It is iso intense on T1 weighted image and mild hyper intense on T2 weighted image. And it shows intense post contrast enhancement. Surgical resection of the tumor was done along with laminectomy. The tumor is well encapsulated, firm in consistency. And confined only to the extra dual space. Diagnosis of schwannoma was mainly by the characteristic histological findings. Postoperatively, patient showed gradual progressive improvement. So here is T1 weighted image and post contrast image. It is ISO intense on T1 weighted image and it shows post contrast enhancement. And here are the T2 weighted image and post contrast image. It is mildly hyper intense on T2 weighted and it shows post contrast enhancement. It is hyper intense on stir and T2 weighted images. So, coming to the discussion of the schwannoma, these are benign soft tissue tumors that arise from the peripheral nerve sheets throughout the body and are commonly encountered with type 2 neurofibromatosis. On basis of histological patterns, these are divided into antenna type A and type B. The type 1 is highly cellular and demonstrates nuclear parasite and varicae bodies. Varicae bodies refer to a stacked arrangement of two rows of elongated palisading nuclei and alternating bands of SLR zones that are made up of tubular cytoplasmic process of Schwann cells. Type 2 are more loosely organized cellular structures with areas of myxomatous and cystic changes. It is often thought that type 2 represents degenerated type 1 tissue. Either tumors develop as fusiform masses, eccentrically located with the inval nerve and are contained within the epineurium. Coming to the MRI imaging features, these are ISO to hyper intense on T1 weighted images and hyper intense on fluid sensory sequences and often diffusely enhancing on contrast enhanced images. The tissue heterogeneity is relatively common and particularly the cystic degeneration. The heterogeneity has, has shown to be more common in antenna type B. I mean, uh, correlate histologically more in antenna type B than type A. So the type 1 tumors are predominantly tend to be small and homogeneous, whereas type 2 tend to be heterogeneous. The larger and more heterogeneous tumors also demonstrate increased hemocytin deposits and may be referred as ancient schwannomas. But the malignant degeneration of schwannomas is extremely rare. Conclusion, spinal schwannomas are overall rare and are included in differential 
a patients present with radiculopathy or myelopathy mri imaging allows characterization of spinal schwannoma which helps with the identification of the tumors which is vital when exploring surgical and adjuvant treatment options and patient management so these are my references thank you